Chris, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really, really excited about this chat. As one of the best salespeople I've ever worked with, I'm delighted to welcome you to an interview with me today. Thank you. No, awesome. Thank you very much for having me. Very exciting. And uh, as I said, I haven't seen you and spoke to you in ages, so it's good to catch up. I know. So we worked together, gosh, just as a bit of a background for over, oh, about three years. Yeah, it would have been maybe, when did you, maybe 2017 to 20, roughly? Yes. Yeah, around yeah. about then. Yeah. And um, full disclosure to anyone who sees this, Chris taught me an awful lot about what I know. So uh, really, really excited to get into uh, asking you some questions about how on earth you learned so much about selling without making making people feel like they're being sold to, which is what I think you're a genius at. Okay. So Chris, I'm wondering if you can kick us off telling me a little bit about how is it that you found yourself getting into sales? How is it that you found yourself in a position that, you, I mean, it's more account management and business development that you're in now but sort of yeah. rewinding a little bit how, how did you find out that you could sell probably the answer i started um when i was i was about 20 and i was working in call centers yeah um and for some reason back then it was like you know like a telstra type thing where you just take you know a thousand inbound calls a day yes. uh but then you bow to Oh, here we go. A little, oh, little hello. Busy. School holidays. Um, so, yeah, started in that sort of environment. And there was always prizes and things going. And I just seemed to win them. I think what I've done is I, I found the way in that environment to be efficient. So where people might do, say, 100 calls or yeah. do 100 things, I'd find a way to do 300. Yeah. Um, so I just found myself being very efficient. I find little shortcuts on just even... As the phones dropped in, I found a way to like go, all right, well, that might take eight seconds. I found a way to get it down to two just to get more calls in. So probably efficiency is what led me to winning a lot of things um, and being just productive. Just I prefer to be busy. I prefer to have that amount of things going on. It makes me work faster and quicker. And then I just found a way to make all that work. And I think that's probably just genuine chatting to people and being helpful, but then being able to just, if you do more than anyone else, you're probably going to get results from it. So. Yeah, absolutely. And if I were to think back and obviously Chris Broadfoot was always at the top of the board, but, um, but it wasn't just like a, um, I, I feel like what a lot of salespeople um, and talking to people that are just starting out here will find that they're on this roller coaster of, you know, yeah. they might get a win and then, you know, it all goes to, you know, what, um, and then they might have another good month and then they have another few months where it's really inconsistent. But for you, I, you know, maybe through that efficiency, it seems like you kind of nailed the the consistent performing and i want to i want to say that might be to do with um referrals like you getting quite a lot of referral business that you self-generated yeah yeah definitely definitely in the in the fx field like through tour um i remember looking back and i'd have a month on month you'd be looking at 80 to 85 percent repeat and referral business which was huge so repeat wise is obviously corporate clients that might have to do things every month. But yeah, heaps of referrals because like, you just look after someone and the penny dropped one day after maybe six or 12 months at tour where you're always making outbound calls and you're always calling mobiles. When someone answered the phone and said, oh, hey, Chris. And I was like, oh, they've saved my number in their phone. Mm. I must be important to them. And then it got me thinking to say, well, yeah, if you've got a financial planner, an accountant, whatever it is, you rely on them for that information to help you. You've got a problem, whatever it is, you, you call them. And I thought, well, it's probably a bit the same in FX. I'm like, these people, you think everyone might know how to transfer money overseas, but they don't. So mm -hmm. they go, so they're then relying on you. And that was when the, the penny dropped of, okay, you're important to this person because you've got information, you know how to help them. And then it was just a case of being as helpful as you can and like that you go, oh, my mum's just sold a property or my sister's just needs to do this. Call Chris. He's the FX guy. He'll sort it out. And I think that's where it came from. And then that just snowballs. And the longer you're in an industry or in that environment, just more and more referrals, you know, come. Yeah, definitely. And for someone who is trying to learn that skill, um, you know, yes, being helpful and um, also, you know, having a lot of expertise helps a lot. Um, how do you ask? How do you ask someone for a referral? How do you open that door for a referral? You know, something that people push a lot is asking for it all the time. And it's probably something I wasn't great at was asking. It just happened. It's really weird. I, I did ask, don't get me wrong, like you'd say you might put an email at the bottom, you know, 
if you have friends or family that could use my assistance, please get them to, to get in touch or just through conversations. Like, so just that discovery, you're always making notes and someone might say, oh, we're moving to the, the UK because my partner's there, but there then then we're moving somewhere else. And you sort of just make a note, all right, well, there's a partner there that might also have a requirement. And you just build that into conversation over time. And then at the end, if, it, if it's all gone well, obviously you can drop in the, the line of what you mentioned previously that your partner needs to do something. You know, is there anything I can help with? So it's just picking up in your discovery and listening for little clues, but not, I've never really come out, I suppose, straight out and go, oh, do you know anyone else that, that I can help? It's more so because if you've listened previously, again, to them, they're like, oh, this guy, he's paying attention, you know? So again, it just builds a little bit more credibility, I think. Definitely. And um, yeah, it's really helpful because, yeah, and, and often if you ask someone, you know, do you have a referral, uh, someone that I can help? They're, I mean, on the spot, generally the answer is going to be no. And then it's weird. So. It's not really a comfortable, even though it should be, it's still a bit of like a closed question where people's re- natural reaction is like you're trying to sell them something. No, no, I'm good. No, I don't know anyone. And, and this is what's coming up a lot with the people I've been working with is they, they want to sell and they want the skills to sell, but they don't want to be a salesperson. Um, yeah. And it's a huge, huge thing that everyone, they think salesperson and they think, oh, God, like they, they, their faces change and it's kind of like an icky subject, you know, yeah. I will like learn how to sell. Um, but what I think that uh, from what I noticed that you seem to do uh, better than, you know, 99% of people is, uh, and it's got different terms in the online space since I've sort of transitioned there, but um, providing a lot of value. And I think that you do that through expertise and through taking amazing notes on discovery and picking up on cues. Um, But I've definitely noticed that you seem to provide a lot of value in the time that you're talking to them. And I think that maybe that's a contributing factor to how people then recommend you to other people. Yeah, I think so. I think because also, I think it's in any industry, like we all, Cindy and I recently, we're going to get some new iPhones. So we, so, you know, you do your own research and then you go down to the Optus store because you have to buy it there. And you find that we knew a thousand times more about the new iPhone than the guy in the shop. And it leaves you with such shit feelings. Like, well, what, are, what, are you, what is this guy doing? He's rubbish at his job. You know what I mean? like, when people are dealing, like, so I take big pride and I want to know or be as helpful as I can because that's when they come to you. I went into the JB Hi-Fi and there was a guy in there in the oven department because our oven broke. He knew everything about every oven. It's so helpful. And it just makes you want to deal with that person because he knows what he's talking about. So mm-hmm. I think that value of, one, knowing your product, whatever it is. Um, two, being able to deliver the key points or what the benefit may be for different for each person. We needed an oven because it broke, but it might be that you're just looking to upgrade, but this guy would have helped us, you know, whatever the case was. Um, so I think having knowledge and always just learning little bits as you go along and then knowing when to deliver and how to deliver to each person and their personality as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if someone asks you a question, you want about to know it, um, and also know a little bit more, and then just you know, constantly give them as much value as you can. Yeah, definitely. And what you said there about personality, I, I think it's a huge thing. And I had to learn a lot about that, that, you know, not, not just my personality, but their personality and when to kind of turn on and off different things. Yeah. I noticed if I, I, I attract a lot of people that are similar to me. So I know yeah. that they like to be kind of loved up a little bit and, you know, a few jokes and it's all very warm. And uh, But then there's other people it just doesn't work with. And that's the same across all industries. Um, but I, I feel like, yeah, that's, that's kind of another area where you excel and you definitely taught me some things about how to kind of I guess uh, like know your audience yeah yeah def- definitely is and I don't know I don't really know how you I suppose you just get that skill from experience um because you might have tried to be warm and fuzzy with someone who just didn't want it and no doubt you've had a thousand of them because that's just your warm and fuzzy constantly and some people are like oh my god this woman's driving me mad stop talking to me <laughs> too positive that's yeah whereas i was always and i still am always when i was in a sales department um or in like sales meetings and everything the feedback to me was all was that i was very monotoned mm. i didn't really have huge excitement I didn't really get down it was just sort of very flat all the time and that was always seen as a negative i think from my own experience that just brought calm to whichever personality you were dealing with if they were really up and positive I'd be a little bit more up and positive, but I wouldn't be on their level. Mm. Um, and if they were just like, a, let's get down to business, it'd be like, yep, no problem. Let's do it. Let's get it sorted. But it was still that just 
just calm, talk them through it, make them feel calm. Um, and then just little bits of, all right, this person's a bit bubbly. I'll be a little bit more bubbly or this person just wants to get something done. We'll just get it done. Um, but always reacting to them more so than, than me. Yeah, definitely. Know, know your audience. A uh, hard <laughs> lesson to learn for some of us, <laughs> but an essential one. So <laughs> I guess um, the other thing I, I really wanted to ask you about is obviously in any sales environment, it doesn't matter whether it's business, personal, um, you know, some sort of large scale operation or a small one, you're always going to get objections or people that go, oh, uh, you know, that you get that kind of like awkward moment where you think, oh, I may have overshot this one or I, <laughs> maybe I pitched it slightly wrong. Uh, what advice could you give to people about what to do in that kind of situation? I've had that, I've had that happen before as well. Like you'll just, you just know it's not going well for whatever reason. You're just like, this is just, you know, I've said the wrong thing or I've given not enough information or I haven't known my audience and that's where objections are coming from. And what I found best in that situation, I don't know why it just seemed to work for me, is I just get off the phone and say, look, we'll just sort of wrap it up. I get off the phone. I give it a couple of minutes and just sort of regather my thoughts, double check my notes, and then I'd call them back. Mm. And I'd say, and I'd just start with, look, Rachel, sorry, I just came off that call and I didn't feel like I gave you the information I was hoping to. Um, do you mind if I just make a few more? I've made a few notes. Do you mind if I just sort of, you know, let you know what, what's going on here? Or um, So, yeah, just sort of taking that step back, get off the phone, you know, before it gets worse and worse, <laughs> before you can't solve, <laughs> resolve it, um, and just gather your thoughts again. Calm down, get a drink of water, go for a walk. Check yeah. your notes again. Go, all right, yeah, all right, I really got that wrong. Um, and then just call them back. Yeah, and you find people appreciate that. They go, oh, yeah, okay. They might have come off being in a bad mood or upset or just, like, feeling awkward, whatever it may be. But if you can just man up in a way and go, yeah, look, didn't go well. Let's let's try it again. Um, people appreciate that as well because it, it shows that you care. You know, you're not yeah. just – hanging up on someone and it's just another number and they'll go, all right, well, I'll get the next sale. It's like, no, no, I'll, I want to get that one. So yeah, yeah. that that's really helped for me. And it's it just helped over time. I've done it, I've done it a few times, thankfully not too many, but definitely come off the phone and go on, all right, I've got to call this person back. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And um, I guess the other thing I, I started doing sales, Oh God, like 13 years ago now. So like, there, there's some things they, they obviously call it, um, unconscious competence which is something that you're going to have in spades and um, it's things that we do without realizing that we do it that is already really efficient or um, you know makes us a bit of an expert in that arena and um, I found it's actually quite tricky to um, to explain to someone some of these things that we do unconsciously because it's unconscious it's just something that you you just know so a lot of people that are are starting out in sales they're they're saying um oh like I you know I've got this script and they they show me this script and it's either extensively long um or it's you know kind of it it feels very 80s kind of double glazed window sale kind of thing nothing wrong with that anyone who sells double glazing but uh but um but yeah it's it's quite difficult to explain that actually some of it is intuitive and you know some of it is you know getting to know the person getting to know their situation taking notes reacting you know when someone gives you a cue and you can tell that's important to them um so yeah I'm I'm interested to know if you were if you were gonna uh train someone from scratch on on sales how how could how could you convey that it's you know it's not just about having a good a good script or um you know doing doing a a little bit of of a sales training on on one particular thing how how would you help someone kind of pick up those things that it's taken quite a long time for us to learn yeah I, i think um it's obviously difficult to do um because as you say it's it's that unconscious it's the reason so as you know i play football i play football forever and i never wanted to get into coaching because the way I play football is just sort of in my head. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know how I can teach other people what I just do naturally. Um, but then, I, and it takes time because this year I've started coaching an under 18 and it takes time and you just got to show them and show them and show them. And as you start doing that, some of that stuff does come out where you can try and relay it. And, I, and it's the same in sales. I think it's, you probably just have to one, again, it comes back to, the, the customer's not always going to run off that script. So if, if they mm-hmm. ask you a, a left field question, 
you still want to be able to know how to answer it. You can't just be reading off a script and someone asks you something, you go. So, um, but I think to, to teach someone that, I think they sort of have to sit with you and listen to what you do. And I think I probably want to found the best way is have someone sit there, listen to what you do. And then when you come off a call is sort of take a few minutes and, and go through it again and say, all right, well, the reason I said this was because of this. or the reason I asked this was because of this. Um, and I guess that's probably the way to get your experience out is straight away after it is it, sort of just, yeah, break down what you've done, why you've done it. And you can say, look, the reason I asked this question is because I've been in this, I've done this a thousand times and I know that this is going to be a question of theirs. So moving forward, you should know this because someone's going to ask you this down the line. Um, but it's going to always take time because you can't get everything out to everyone you know, in a short sales presentation. It's just something that's a, an ongoing learning thing. But having someone listen to you more and more questions, role play, as much as everyone hates role play, it is a great way to, you know, to, to learn things and, and, uh, and absorb information and ask different questions and be put on the spot and ask random questions and see how you react to it. Role play is great. I know with a few, you know, sales training places they do or in sales environments, they might role play two or three times a day, you know, so you just get comfortable with it um, because, yeah, it's a, it's a great learner, you know, and then just doing it, you know, have someone sit with you while you're making your calls and as you come off and they'll go, how do you feel? You go, oh, no, I don't think that went very well. You go, you know, why not? It's all feedback. It's like, look, yeah, that was a good question. That one I'd probably word a different way and these are the reasons why or, you know, yeah. so... Having someone with experience just taking the time with you to break down and give you feedback and um, just, yeah, just help, again, adding value, whether it's to the client or whether it's to a peer because they need help as well. Definitely. And I loved what you said as well about just knowing your product and how that's such an important thing. And some, what I've been telling people recently is actually we have got a bit of a responsibility. If you do know your product and you know your service and you know you're good, like like with you and helping people with FX, is that if you if you don't practice this skill of, of selling, uh, they're likely going to go to someone else who's probably less knowledgeable, who doesn't know the product yeah. and probably doesn't <laughs> care about them. So we actually, as salespeople, have a bit of a responsibility to to learn this skill so that you can help if you if you genuinely can help this person you are knowledgeable on that product or service yeah. we do have a responsibility to let them know that that's the case and I think that gives a bit of confidence that hey I actually I am an expert in this arena and yeah. I can help you and then it doesn't really feel like selling anyway no no and it shouldn't it never should because at the end of the day if you do your discovery in whatever product it is it might not suit them so just you can just finish the conversation. Go, look, my service isn't going to suit what you're after. Thanks very much for your time, but um, I'll maybe recommend you to X, Y, Z. They might be a better fit. Um, I've done that several times as well. Because you can't, when someone doesn't need your service, that's when you become that 80s pushy salesperson. Because mm. you're reading off a script and you're trying all these tips and tricks, but they don't need it. You're just conning someone or trying to con someone into something they don't need. So just move on. You know, you can't sell to everyone. You need to find your little niche on who you can help because the ones you can help are the ones you're about to sell to. As you say, when you deliver that you're an expert, you know what you're talking about. You've done this a thousand times before. That's why you should deal with me um, because you need this help in this area. But if you don't need that help, then me telling you all this is, is just wasting both of our times. Exactly right. Oh, so, so, so valuable. And um, I think people are going to learn a lot from, from listening to what you've had to say today. Now, my FX days are long gone, so I, I'm well and truly out of the game. But um, I'm interested for you to share with whoever's listening, because there's obviously lots of people um, that I've been speaking to that are international. They've either got businesses or, you know, for, for personal reasons, they're moving around. I've met a lot of people that are nomadic. Um, so please tell everyone what it is that you're doing now and how you're helping people. And, um, um, and obviously I can vouch for the fact that you've been an FX for much longer than me. And if anyone has any questions, how would they get in touch with you and how do you help? So I um, well, while I was at Tor, I was there for five, five and a half years. And then I went to Send and I was there for about 12 months. And then I had a break from it. Um, I just, Cindy and I had a cafe um, and sort of just had a bit of a break, a bit of a family reset in a way, a bit more time at home. Um, but I always, I've always enjoyed foreign exchange. I just liked it, seemed to do well at it. Um, and I mean, at the start, and you would have been the same probably, when I first done a couple of large transactions for people, 
just say a million dollars, right, using a round figure. The difference between them using the bank and using a, an FX service, like it just blew my mind. I, th- I thought I was wrong because it was like a twenty to thirty thousand dollar difference, and it's like that can't, can't be right. It just doesn't it didn't compute. Like this doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. Um. So the more I've sort of had a bit of break, and um, we had we were in an industrial area and just got chatting to people, and sort of always looked for a way to go. Well, how could I do this for myself? Because I know what I'm doing. I've got the client side of it and I know how to help people and I know what obstacles they'll come up against how can I sort of put that together with like a bank or a, a partner that can handle the the FX side and then run it for myself and and recently I've been able to to do that I've set up my own company called CB3 Global Payments um, and what we do is we help but we probably gear more towards people that sell internationally or export uh, we can provide international banking in, in over 30 countries. Um, so if you want to sell in 30 different currencies, we can give you one dashboard and you can manage it all yourself um, with me in the background. So we now have a lot of corporate clients uh, who import and export. Uh, but on the side of that is a lot of personal clients. So we really just mainly deal in immigration uh, and inheritance um, and international property. That is pretty much the only areas we, we deal and when, then with corporate. So... Yeah, we'll uh, there'll be a rebrand. I'll have a website up and running shortly. I've got one now, but I'm going to rebrand it. A lot more content on there, a lot of helpful videos, hopefully, as well. Um, and just be that, you know, it's going to be a, more of a boutique-type service. I'm only going to have 50 to 100 clients, probably, and then just manage them and, and make sure that we're, you know, looking after them, especially at the moment. The last 12, 18 months, rates have gone out of control, up, down, all over the place with, with COVID, as you've probably seen. Mm. Um, so when you're a business and now you've got the added issues at the moment of shipping delays, shipping costs, um, Australian dollar dropping. So as a business, you can sort of help protect them against a lot of that stuff to an extent. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's good it's still in that that area of, of helping people, helping businesses and, and also helping personal clients with, you know, with, I had a friend recently moved to the States. He had to send a million dollars across to buy a property. And the difference between him using Bank West and, and coming through myself was over 30,000 Australian dollars, you know, yeah, so, absolutely. so like, it's huge, as you know. It's just that peace of mind of having someone like, for, for someone who's doing a transfer of that size, obviously they're not doing it all the time. Um, whereas yeah. for you, it's, it's a lot to them, but for you, you're sat there kind of monitoring what's going on and having a look at, um, at this stuff day in and day out. So, it, you know, for you, it's kind of, you know, not, not, a, not a huge deal, uh, but for them it is, and it can make such a big difference. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. And I think that again, coming back to that sort of calm uh, approach for people is, whether it's someone sending a thousand dollars, a million dollars, ten million dollars, it's only just numbers to me because it's the same process, so it doesn't matter. So when you're then dealing with them, you can understand because I remember sometimes you'd have the longest conversations and the the most questions from people sending between two and five thousand dollars around the world because that was all the money in the world to them. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas when you're dealing with clients that are doing five, ten million dollars a year, um, to them it's just everyday business to, to so to me it's everyday business but you, again you have to know your audience and what's important and what they're looking for and then be able to deliver that value to them and in, in, in sort of what makes sense to, to them themselves yeah absolutely well i i can't thank you enough for taking the time to talk to me today and um, share your knowledge and wisdom um like i say i i learned an incredible amount for you, from you so uh, i was really excited to share some of that info with uh, the people i've been helping with sales as well um i will make sure that i drop any links of yours below this video so if anyone needs any help with anything to do with fx transfers speak to chris and uh i we will no doubt talk again soon thank you so much for joining me chris No, you're welcome. Thank you very much for having me and all your kind words. And uh, it was good to see you again. (laughs) Good to see you.